Hello and welcome back to the Gold Newsletter. My name is Kai Hoffman. I'm the NJR Mining Guy on Twitter and the CEO of the SOAR Financial Group. And together with Brian London, I'm the host of the Gold Newsletter YouTube channel, and I'm joined by Tim Moody. Tim, you're the present CEO over at Pan Global Resources. We're just spending some fantastic time in Germany together. Yeah. We're in beautiful Munich. We're at an old brewery right now, yeah. uh, just, just capping or wrapping up the day here. Um, Tim, introduce us to Pan Global. Let's yeah. start with a quick introduction, 30, 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. Who are you? What are you guys about? Yeah, okay. So, so Pan Global Resources, we're uh, listed in Canada. Mm -hmm. We have secondary listings in uh, in the US and also in Frankfurt. Uh, we're primarily a copper exploration company. All our projects are in Spain. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've, here we are. We've got a uh, great copper, advanced copper story, a big pipeline of targets ahead of us. Um, really exciting times ahead. Fantastic. We're going to drill a bit deeper. We're going to yep. get a bit more granular, of course, on the story. Yep. But catch us up on the cap structure real quick. How much cash do you have? Who are yep. some of the biggest shows? Yeah, so uh, we completed the financing at uh, end of October last year. A bit over $6 million. We're three times oversubscribed. We have about $4 million, uh, in the bank at the moment. Um, we have about 240 million shares out. Share price is about 18 19 cents thereabouts. Um, so we have some warrants outstanding as well. Um, which if exercise could bring in another nine million or thereabouts. So uh, what's the exercise price? Thirty cents. Oh, okay, so it's actually not that far. Not that far. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Uh, some of the biggest shareholders. So we have uh, uh, at the moment probably twenty-five to thirty percent of our shareholders are institutions. Uh, we had ten institutions come in on the last financing: four, four Swiss, six U.S. based. Um, then we have uh, we have a couple of others in in North America, and Canada, and so on. Uh, without naming all, the, <laughs> all of the all of the uh, the, the funds themselves, then, then we have uh, a big portion of high net worth investors. Probably again a similar percentage, 25, 30 percent of our investors are high net worth. Uh, share the insiders have about eight uh, percent. That goes to 14 percent on a fully diluted basis. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, rest is retail. Do you know it? No, f fair enough. Yeah. Research coverage. We have uh, two uh, groups covering us at the moment, Echelon and SCP. Both have us as a buy target at 85 cents, uh, obviously four times their current share price. So uh, we'll okay. see how that changes with the increasing copper price. Okay. Tim, let's dive a bit deeper into the story. You called yourself an advanced exploration company. Yeah. We have to talk about it. What, what, what does that mean? Because yeah. you, you've done some drilling, of course. Yeah. Um, run us a bit through the history of the company. Like, where are you at right now? Why are you yeah. advanced? Yeah. So. Uh, our main, we have a number of uh, projects in different parts of uh, Spain that we're looking at, but our main uh, effort is in southern Spain in what's called the Iberian Pirate Belt. So we got hold of a really excellent piece of, a really exciting piece of uh, mineral, mineralizing ground territory, whatever you want to call it, um, which I knew from my old days and uh, working in the area 20 years ago, uh, and I knew it hadn't been explored for 30 years. Um, which meant, okay, there's tremendous opportunity here. We knew other discoveries have been made, made in the area. So anyway, we've covered the area. We've got maybe a dozen, 12, 15 targets in the area. We've only drilled three or four of these at the moment. We've already made an advanced, we have a, we made one big discovery or say, we have 180 drill holes into that now, it's still growing. It's resource ready, we, we say, um, we've, we've completed advanced metallurgy, etc. We've now made a second discovery, and now we have all these others that we want to test. Uh, no, I, I love that term. You use the word uh, discovery. Let, let, let's define it. What's a discovery for you? Run us a bit through it. Yeah, so a, a discovery for me is where you, initially is where you drill and you intersect something that is potentially economic grades and widths and has the scale potential to be a mine. I think that really, for me, sums, sums it up. Yeah. Um, so what we're looking for is, is, is this got the, well, is it an open, open up or underground type uh, opportunity? And then you look at what's the, what are the grades, the surrounding mines and so on. And uh, yeah, we were, we, we were pretty confident on the first two drill holes we did at La Romana, this looks like we're onto a mine. It was near surface, 20 metres sent levels of copper, mines nearby. Um, we said, okay, we're onto it here. This is a big, big, uh, big target. Yeah. 
I'll run us a bit through the drill results that you produced. You drilled 130 holes. Oh, give us 180. I always confuse yeah, that number yeah, for some reason. Yeah. But run us a bit yeah. through that. Like, can you give us an overview? Like, what was the average grades? Because I know you haven't put out a resource. We so we've got to be a bit cautious, yeah. like yeah. Uh, advising on cutoff grades and things yeah. like that. But to yeah. give us a bit of an overview, what what could we expect? Yeah, well, we've completed about it's about 40 kilometers of drilling on it thereabouts. Average about 200 meters depth. The the drilling so far. I guess the average thickness around 20 meters, uh, but we've we've been getting uh, intersections of up to 50 meters of around a percent copper equivalent. That includes copper, some tin and silver. Um, we've had some intersections which much higher grade than that. Uh, so it really varies. We've had intersections of massive chalcopyrite with you know, some spectacular grades: 14 percent, 17 percent chalcopyrite uh, as uh, copper. Sorry, as chalcopyrite. Um, but then we have a lot of low-grade material as well, which is going to give us the, the tons and some, for an open pit. That's what also makes a big part of the story. You mentioned you've only drilled to about 200 meters depth. I've heard yeah. so many stories yeah. in meetings like, well, they didn't, the drill, yeah. they didn't drill deep enough. Yeah. Uh, is, that, is that a risk? Is that an opportunity? Like, how, yeah. how would you grade yeah. that? So, so as things stand, uh, we have identif defined copper mineralization continuous over 1.4 1.45 kilometres of strike length, east-west, uh, comes to surface and uh, in a couple of areas. Uh, otherwise, it just has a thin layer of post-mineral barren co cover over the top, just enough to hide it from the Romans. As you know, this is an area the Romans used to explore. Um, and then it just dips moderately about 35 to 40 degrees very consistently across the entire area that we've been drilling. And it re it's still open at depth in a number of areas. So at this stage, we don't know what cutoff grade we're going to apply. So rather than keep chasing the mineralization at depth, we're looking at this as an open pit target and therefore finding more near surface copper mineralization is a higher value, let's say, uh, prior priority uh, objective for us. Yeah, for obvious reasons, it's uh, cheaper and easier to, to um, mine. Absolutely, quicker turnaround yeah. IRRM yeah. Uh, as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about risks a little bit as well. Yeah. Then uh, I need to cut here. I lost my train of thought. I had a really good question lined up for you there. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Got me. Um, but Tim, you've drilled 40,000 meters. And you said it's extremely continuous, 1.45 yeah. kilometers. Yeah. What's stopping you from putting a resort? Yeah, um, good question. Uh, first of all, we haven't closed, closed the, the target off. We only got access to half of the target in the middle of last year. Um, since we got that access, we've increased the size of the deposit by perhaps 25%. Uh, most of it we've drilled on a, say, 50 by 50 metre pattern, 50 by 25 metres in the really shallow zone. That's enough, based on that, the work we've done, for measured and indicated category if we were to put a resource out today. As we're stepping now to the west in this farm that we got access to middle of last year, we're stepping out a little bit wider, probably drilling this to more an inferred category. But based on the geophysics, we can see it growing another three or 400 metres. We'd rather delineate the, the western extension, see how big it is before we sort of rush out with the resource. And also add that we've only just uh, completed the detailed metallurgy as well. I think, I know not everyone puts out metallurgy at this stage, uh, but we've done quite detailed metallurgy. We think it's really important to, to have an understanding of what you're chasing, what you've got to deal with. Uh, whether you can extract on, it. Whether yeah. you can extract it. Yeah, what, what sort of... If, you know, yeah. We, I was going to say, it's, it's an important point. And a lot of companies wait a very, yeah. very long to, to put out metallurgy. Yeah. Uh, what were some of the results? What, what is it? What yeah. metallurgy so telling you? The last uh, two news releases, I guess, we put out have been metallurgy, which yeah, not, not everyone understands. Not as sexy really. as high grade not drill results. Not as sexy as a great drill <laughs> result or something like that. But, you know, that's where the money is. Um, it, metallurgy is so important. And uh, so we, we, we put out some the what we call the copper variability test. So last year we put out the first stage of copper metallurgy. This is where you, we took uh, so a composite sample from across the deposit. And then we, we did, ran a whole bunch of different tests. You come out with, a say, a processing route, a flow sheet potentially. And we were able to show you know, excellent uh, concentrate grades and recoveries from that work. So the next stage was to say, OK, let's, let's see how variable, how that processing flow sheet might look across the deposit. Is it is it highly variable or is it pretty consistent? So that's the idea of a variability test. We were able to show that it was pretty consistent. We, there were three blocks where we just needed to just tweak a little bit, uh, just alter the grind size, mm -hmm. but we were able to achieve at the end of the day the same, you know, good, high-grade, clean 
concentrate at good recoveries across the deposit. So uh, that's the the the, uh, the copper. No deleterious, no penalty elements. Of course, and we were also able to compare that with the other mines in the belt because this is a mining area. You know, we're not starting from scratch here. We've got plenty of reference material. So this is uh, compared to the other mines, coarser grain, lower in pyrite, and no penalty on them. So three, three really big wins for us. Um, yeah. So it's something we talked about actually this week, and I've yeah, asked you a couple yeah. follow-up well, questions. The like, tin's the other one, of course. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll talk about tin in a yeah, second. There's yeah. a nice kicker to have. Yeah. But on, on the metallurgy, because you kept repeating, saying like, okay, we're, we've got the cleanest, potentially cleanest concentrate out yeah. there. Yeah. Um, what what makes it so clean? Right. Yeah, so I, I, it comes down to the geology. So many of the, the big uh, mines in the belt and the, what's made the Iberian pirate belt famous is uh, these were essentially massive sulphide deposits, well, bulk energetic massive sulphide. So things have formed from what would have been hot smokers on the sea floor in the ancient times and formed these accumulations of pirate, massive pirate on the sea floor. Uh, in our situation, what we, what we think explains the difference is that this was something formed subsea floor, part of the same mineral system, but a little bit, a uh, little bit deeper. So we don't have the same pyrite contents, coarser grain, and may explain why we don't have all the the deleterious. Uh, the no arsenic, no bismuth. No arsenic, say. bismuth, antimony, uh, even zinc. Zinc can be a, con a, a contaminant, a, pe a penalty rather than a, a benefit. So, Let's talk about metal composition. You brought up tin. Uh, you also have some silver. Yeah. Uh, what's sort of the, the, the distribution, yeah. the metal distribution? So we, we don't have a lot of uh, sort of silver. It's not a high-grade silver, only a few grams of silver. Uh, but when, you're, when you convert that into a concentrate, and silver's all going into the concentrate, we were getting sort of over 60% recovery of silver in the concentrate. By the time we take, say, a 0.4% copper uh, starting material and convert that to a concentrate of 28%, so yeah, mul to multiply that, you multiply a couple of grams of silver to that, you get over 100 grams silver, and and you need about 30 grams, you know, one ounce silver in your concentrate to be payable. Mm. So we're getting sort of three times that. So it's a payable. I was going to say, sounds like a nice non-dilutive form of financing. It's a nice, uh, yeah. So we know that it'll pay. You know, it's it's a payable silver addition to us. Uh, and more than just pay, it'll give us, it'll, well, it adds, adds something to the to the economics. The tin's a, a, di a different uh, story, and we can cover that now. Yeah, we, we can talk about tin, but also just maybe wrap up over around the metallurgy part as well. Yeah. It seems like you went above and beyond what other juniors might be doing in terms of metallurgy. Yeah. Why do you feel the need to do that? Yeah, uh, well, I think ultimately we want to come out, when we do come out with a resource, we want to, have to either put the PEA the preliminary economic assessment out about the same time, you think that's really important as the resource or soon soon thereafter. So that will position us to be able to do that. And already we're being told from the metallurgists, given the the results that we've got so far, the consistency of the mineralisation across the deposit, it's adequate for three feasibility studies. So we don't need to do anything more unless we see something radically different in the next drilling to the on the western extension, we've we don't need to go any further. We, we are looking at some tweaks, some further improvements, where we might be able to extract it a little <laughs> bit more, you know, so, um, which, you know, everything helps in an open pit. Phenomenal. 88% right. recovery on the on the copper. Was it 60% for silver? Let's talk tin. Yeah, what's yeah, what's no, the recovery so, like and so, what's the significance yeah, so, here? So the tin was was uh, was a real surprise because we really weren't sure what we would get uh, there because whilst we can see some coarse tin as cassiterite, we, there was some fine tin that you can't see. So we were so well, how are we going to be able to recover that? Because it, yeah, it, an unknown at that stage. So uh, the test work we did was was really an, uh, exceptional. We, beyond our expectations, as I said in, in the news release as well. So we were able to get 58% recovery on a head grade of 0.25%. So, got to give some context. I'll give you Not some just for context. myself, but I think for so our viewers, give some what does context. that mean? So, this is what you would call a cassiterite sulfide association mm -hmm. uh, deposit. Now, most of the world's hard rock tin, where tin's the primary commodity, are uh, this cassiterite sulfide association. Um, the range where tin is the primary commodity, the range of grades for those deposits is 0.2% to 1.4%. The recoveries are typically 30% to 60%. So we were at the bottom end of the grade range, getting the top end of the recovery uh, range. So, um, 
And then the concentrate grades was the real uh, surprise here. So we were able to achieve 63% copper, uh, sorry, tin concentrate grades. That's extremely high. Which puts us into the premium price mm -hmm. range. So most uh, tin deposits, modern tin deposits, where tin is the primary commodity, are happy to get 50 to 55 percent. So getting above 60 percent is a is a is a real winner, particularly when you consider that we're looking at 15 to 20 percent of the in situ value at La Romana no. is is tin. No. So this will this will pay. No. This will make it. This will make a material addition to the the economics of the of the deposit. Help with the lower the cutoffs. <laughs> give us access to more tons for the open pit. That's a lot, a lot of it is in the future, of course. Let's talk about yeah. the here and now. Like, yeah. how are you spending the $4 million that you have right yeah. now? What is yeah. happening on site? Yeah, so it's, you know, it's obviously we're coming off the back of a pretty tough uh, lean period for, for, for junior miners. We've, we've, we've not been able to escape the, uh, the, the, I guess, the suffering that the other. So it's a bit of a balance how we use the money we've got, but at least we have money in the bank. We, we, we as I said, raised $6 million uh, end of October, so we have a bit over four million in the bank today. We're focused on two main objectives: with the drill, it's drilling uh, the western uh, extension of Laramanas to delineate the, the full extent of the, that copper tin mineralisation, and then the other objective was to try and see how big the new discovery Canyon de Honda is. To start to continue to step out from that, to see if it continues, to see if that's got some real size potential and. Yeah, fortunately, it's, it's showing that's the case. So that's the main objective. Of course, we have this long <laughs> list of other targets we want to drill, and as soon as we start to see the market uh, start to pick up, we start to see some reward of movement on the share price, and we'll be really keen to get aggressive again on um, to some... Is, is it possible to put a number around the drill program, like how many metres, how many holes, like in the current phase? In the current phase, uh, for, uh, what's the number? I think we were looking at, I think it was 8,000 8, metres or something like that for this year. Um, of course, we'd like to drill drill a lot more, but yeah, it was something something of that no. that or maybe yeah, there, give or take with this with this with the planned drilling. Maybe it was a bit more than that because we had I think we'd earmarked twenty holes for the the Laramana drilling and eleven holes for the program at Kenyatta Honda. Yes. So we yeah, runs a bit through upcoming catalysts and new flow then as well. So we yes. got, uh, you mentioned PA drilling ongoing. So yeah. Well, if we, had, we listed the catalyst at the beginning of the year, and we, of course we try to hit our milestones. Uh, actually, we did that last year, but it wasn't making much difference. This year, uh, we wanted to get the metal edge results. We've done that. Uh, secondly is the uh, drilling results and the delineation of the western extension of Lara Mana. So we've got drillers, ongoing drill results to come from that. And then we have the drilling results from Kenyatta Honda still to come in. Um, another really important catalyst, and we get a lot of inquiries about this, is the Bravo target, it's a big gravity anomaly just to the east of La Romana, probably the most prominent uh, uh, gravity anomaly in our property. Uh, I think that is a, that's a strong catalyst for us as well. We hope we will, we'll get on the ground on that one within a couple of months or so. And uh, yeah, that's a really big, really exciting target. We don't know what it is, but if it's copper like La Romana, it's in a similar setting, uh, we, we could have something really, really really big on our hands but let, let's see phenomenal i know that bombshell too we're going we're to wrap it yeah. up so, yeah, catalyst okay, so the, 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 the the last uh, i guess the longer term catalyst is yeah. obviously to come out with the resource and the pda yeah. so that's more towards the end of yeah. the year end of the year next year we're going to say within 12 months so no. that's that's where okay. we're working we're, to okay we're working to phenomenal yeah. yeah tim thank you so much for coming to germany thank you so much for yeah. you know introducing the story uh Appreciate it. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, thank you. Everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in here to the Gold Newsletter. I was joined by Tim Moody. He's president and CEO over at Pan Global Resources. And uh, make sure you check him out. Go visit the website. Go, go flip through the deck. And make sure to follow our channel. Hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. What are you thinking? Is Pan Global doing the right thing? What would you do different? And are you invested? Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll be back with lots more.